Today I'm going to be having 10 to 15 minutes first about what is ChatGPT and AI. We are going to try our very best to make it practical, like you are going to be opening and doing practicalism on how this is it, how you can respond, how you can do presentations, and we can have a chat if this something is good, it's going to 10 times your business, or it's going to make people like no longer be around. It's always good because this is the high hot topic now in the market. And I want to give it to Muhammad. He's an amazing guy. He has 38,000 people on LinkedIn. So how did you build your LinkedIn? Later we're going to know about that. And also he has a huge community of people who are believers in uh, AI and ChatGPT. So please make sure that to connect with him later, uh, be on the community because they're always there, one message away to support. So he is your this kind of topic guy, okay? So uh, if you can start, please, and I'm so happy to have you here. Thank you, Vichy. Thank you for the opportunity, everyone. You guys can hear me clear. I don't need a mic. Yes. Yeah. No, 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 it's good. It's fine. Good, good. good evening, everyone. Good evening. Uh, how many of you have heard about generative AI chat GPT before? <laughs> so everyone, right? And how many of you are actually using it in their work regularly? Almost 80%. So the work is easy for me now to talk more about it. So uh, actually generative AI is changing how humans create. Right? For the first time, what is happening is that humans are supervising and machines are doing the work. And uh, it is actually helping us lift all the daunting, the dull, the difficult tasks from our shoulders so that we can focus on our work, on our vision and what actually matters. So this is a very good opportunity for all of us to understand about these things. So a little bit about myself, Christine already introduced about me. I'm a data scientist, 18 years of experience. I have worked across AI. And uh, when I say AI, generative AI that we're talking about is a small part of AI that we should understand. So this, so it is very new. As all of us know, generative AI, chat GPT was uh, coming, uh, all of us know about it by, by the launch that OpenAI did on November 30th when it opened it to public and it was the first uh, tool to reach uh, 1 million in, in 7 days. So this is the news that you may see, right? Facebook took this many days, Netflix took this many days, but ChatGPT took only uh, 7 days to reach 1 million and now it is a bunch more, the official numbers are not yet released. Every day more and more people are getting added to this. So now before going as I told you, generative AI is a small component of AI. So what actually is AI? So the AI ecosystem, AI, artificial intelligence is actually very old, guys, right? So guess anyone, when was AI started? Anyone can make a wild guess? When this word artificial intelligence came to the limelight? 20 years back. It's not actually 20 years, it's almost yes. six decades. 1956, it was, this term was coined. I tell this because people think AI is a very new thing. But this term was coined in 1956 by the doctor, I forgot his name, but it was this word was extensively used by scientists and researchers to do uh, their work. But the problem was there at that time there was no computer. So everything was on paper, the calculations and all the statistics and maths. So that's why it was there was not so much hype. Only very few researchers and scientists were using it, but it was actually there. The discipline was there and the first adopters of artificial intelligence were the life sciences, the people who developed vaccines, the medicines and all those things. And after that, in 1997, when the computers became accessible to public, uh, Microsoft launched Windows and it was commercially available for many companies. So 1997, the term machine learning, wherein computers were used to do run the AI, that was basically the models and all were created back in 1960s, so all the models that we are using, but to use it on a larger data, it started in 1997, machine learning. These are some buzzwords that I am using, I am just telling you quickly, deep learning in 2017, this was the, basically the advanced type of machine learning and then we have our most famous and the most lovely generative AI. This is this actually, we are as a data scientist, we are very really happy that this, this has come because Till here, we, only technical people and big companies and we are talking about AI. But what this thing has done, it is a blessing in disguise for us. And now if I can have a talk at this business meeting about generative AI, about these topics, because people are aware about this. 
One year back, no one would invite me for a conference to talk about these topics because only technical and uh, people and engineers and mathematicians would understand all these things. Because when I ran you across machine learning, deep learning, this is all we don't use. Facebook uses, Netflix uses, Instagram uses. But this tool, every one of us is using. What is it? We are the uh, we have to give inputs to the machine. We are one of the uh, you can components of generative AI because whatever prompts we are giving, I'm going to talk more about that, is a part of the uh, engine. Till deep learning and all these things, we had no interaction. Like I think most of you are using Instagram filters, right? Instagram filters when you make your uh, you use AI beauty. So those are basically AI wherein you can give some uh, thing that they can make your photo more beautiful. These are also use cases of AI which we have been using as a users for a long time. But now, because of this, now we are more and more awareness is coming and people are talking about this. Now, we all know what is generative AI. I want to now uh, get you to the ecosystem is very important because people think this is very new. This The, the thing that we are using, uh, the models that we are using are part of deep learning, but there is only one extra layer that has come in. That is the user prompt, uh, what we are, it has, the, the generative AI it is also called conversational AI, but there are different words that are there, but it is basically I want to talk more about it in the later slides. So the most two examples, the most two uh, important things that people are knowing is ChatGPT and Dali2, right? ChatGPT is for uh, conversations, Dali2 is for images. And there are other uh, bigger versions, but these are one of the main two are there, and there are other use cases which I am going to quickly talk about. So now, what is actually generative AI? So generative AI is actually designed to generate new content. So that is the main thing. We are generating new content using our prompts. There are mainly three things that are there in uh, generative AI, three main components. One is the prompt engineering part, wherein we are typing something, we are inputting something to the system. Then there is a black box. This is called the large language models and all those things that actually takes our input processes from the huge 165 million parameters of data it is now it is growing more and more this is from the gpt 3.45 release that has happened right now the, the it is growing and growing as we talk the LNN models are becoming more and more better that is processing our data and giving us an output and this is the third part as we all know the outcome the output is our main thing that is coming and this output the best thing in, if in normal uh, ai models this output is what is given by the system is fixed. But in generative AI, what happens, it changes. That's why I mentioned output, I did not mention only output, I mentioned output as desired. Because if you don't like the output, you can go back and make the prompt more and more specific. I'm going to give more examples of prompts, but this is the main life cycle. And in this is the place, these, this, these two places, the first and the third, uh, humans are controlled. Uh, on the prompt that they are putting and the output that they are getting, right? They have the control. If they don't like the prompt, they can uh, do uh, iterations so that the prompt, the output that they want can come. And you need to be more and more unique. Why I am stressing on the point? Because as we all know, many of us are using chat GPT for our outputs, for our whatever work we are doing. So we have to get more and more personalized to the machine so that we get an output that can be tailored as ours. So we have we have to have the distinct, we have to stand away from the crowd. Because if every uh, output is coming similar and every one of us are using the same output, then our uh, SEO will go down. Our uh, We will get penalized for many things, repeated content and all those things. So that's why I'm telling this is a very important part. That's why many of you already, I think many of you, have you heard of this word prompt engineering before? Anyone of you have heard? Prompt engineering you have heard, right? So this is basically, we are all doing prompt engineering. So uh, Christine, when you are also using ChatGPT, when you are typing something, that is, you know, that, 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 those are also part of prompt engineering. But I will talk about the uh, little bit more uh, intermediate and advanced level of prompt engineering in the next slide. Uses. I showed, I told you four, two uses, but uh, one is image generation is a very important thing. I will show you in the, in the next slides. Video synthesis. You can give sequences of events and they can generate for the videos as well. Language generation is chat GPT and also music also has started. There are a lot of tools uh, that uh, people are using Instagram to generate background music using uh, this generative AI technology. They are just giving a theme, combination of these, these songs, this, this background 
and these things are also happening. And these are basically like music video are more for artists, but people are using it for their content as well, for their marketing content as well. Now coming to prompt engineering in action. So if you guys can just take out, if you want your chat, uh, you can just, if you guys have in your mobile, you can just uh, open open AI or chat GPT. Is it open? It is just, it's, uh, just search for open AI and chat, uh, open AI, chat GPT. Oh, on the app store? No, there is no app. So uh, one uh, one caveat I want to tell people, there is no app as of now for uh, ChatGPT. People are selling apps. People are selling apps. Uh, big, uh, companies are just uh, cloning that and hallucinating ChatGPT in app, but there is no official app for ChatGPT. Just, it is just Google, ChatGPT and open it ChatGPT. So I just... Chat. So basically chat.openai.com. Yeah. If you can type chat.openai.com. From how it starts? Yeah. Then this is the way I write an article. Very, very specific upon the format, upon the type of things, SEO optimized, and I give a complete details of everything and I keep changing and adding as I go ahead. So because I do a lot of content creation for my academy. And I need, I cannot just write the, the, that one because thousands of people are writing the same thing. So I have to give a very, very big prompt. And this is how I, to my clients also and to my business also who I talk to, I tell them this is the, you need to be so specific. You can see how many words the article is. This is around 150 words, how detailed it is. And then after all this, then I will write an article on this topic, of so business networking for beginners. And then accordingly, I can change the tone. I can change whatever there is. I want you to act as content writer, very proficient SEO writer, writes fluently English. First, create then outline. Because outline is important for you to rearrange the thoughts and all those things. So I'm just giving a quick example. This is what is prompt engineering, what I'm saying. You have to be very detailed. And we need, the thing is, see, I'll just tell you a synonym, Google search. When Google came, People who knew how to use Google very well, they were the ones who became successful. Everyone uses Google very, uh, you can say, uh, uh, casually. But Google also is a very, uh, there are a lot of parameters, search parameters, and uh, guess expressions that you use to get very good information. Because nowadays, if you just use Google casually, you will be shown advertisements and you will not be shown proper information. Similarly with ChatGPT. We have to be the early adapters. We have to learn the prompt engineering part. And there are a lot of buzz around these words. People say this word prompt engineering. This is the prompt engineering. And you have to be, you have, you can use this template. You can edit it. You can add more. But it has to be very, very much detailed. OK? This is one thing. I can talk more maybe in the questions. This is Dali 2. Dali 2 is for image. I have a question. Yeah, you can take the questions. If I feed a chat GPT with my own articles, can it learn um, to write the next articles like my articles, like my stylus? Yes, yes. You my, can put links stylus. as reference. I do no, not. you can link, it will not work. But okay, at the, the end, please. Yeah, I yes, I, because everyone still has to introduce themselves. So, should okay, I take the so questions so. at the end? Yes. Yeah, it will, I can take the question at the end. You, can, you have to write your, the style of yours. You, to not learn the style, you can give it, you can take this as a reference. But you have to tell, like, is it academic? You have to define. You have to define yourself in the first line, like what you are, what are you trying to talk about, and it is going to. It has a persona, and I will talk more about it. But if you give them your uh, type of article, it's very tough for them to get that because there is no technicality with the way you write. It's very tough for them to judge the way you write because, and uh, I we have tried that as well because it is not that easy. But it may summarize it according to the tone and according to the. Uh, your uh, what you are, that, so that I can talk more about later. And this this one is also a very beautiful thing. So this can you imagine what is this? Anyone? The uh, Dubai. Dubai when With snow. snow. Right? Yes. I was telling you this right, Christian. This Dali tool is basically beautiful for creating. Uh, Dali tool is also an OpenAI software. The website is dali2.openai.com, where you can imagine a scene where snow covers the sand dunes and iconic skyscrapers. So you can write a beautiful script and you can use this in your 
If this is a wonderful art, right? suppose you wanted to get this done one year back, how much would that cost to get this painting made by someone? So now it is easily by the power of your prompts you can generate. And this is one example which I was telling Christine earlier that I wanted to show in this group. You can your imagine there is no limit to imaginative here, right? This is one, but you needed to explain nicely, right? If you just write give a just you can try that as an example. If you just write give an image of Dubai in snow, you will not get so beautiful uh, image. So you need to give a long line of sentence and you need to write these things. Create a digital art work that captures the things. So these are the things that are important that we need to understand. We, we, we cannot just use Google. The way we use Google for chat GPT and open AI, we cannot do that. We have to be detailed. That's why I'm talking about, we are, everyone is talking about prompt engineering. We need to learn and be patient to give prompts. Like we cannot use it like Google. Like just lazy people just type two, three sentences and try to get an output. You cannot do this with open AI. You have to be very, very specific. You have to spend time. And this is where our creativity will come in place. And okay, these are the things I think, I think time is up, we can talk later. Uh, we are basically, most of us has to be a good consumer right now. We have to use these things very well, we have to understand how these things work. We have a question. Yeah, I think that so, we need to do. Okay, cool. I think that okay, my time sorry. is up, right? Yeah. Now, yeah. I get Christine will take over and then I, we can get talk maybe. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 we have questions. Yeah, yeah we can okay. take questions. And I want to write something, I want to let people see something. No, but... Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'll take your...